Guys, this is it, man. This is probably going to be the last seasonal guide. Now, granted, things are going to change week to week and we'll have additional guides roll out. But this is the final season in Destiny. We're not getting another season. As season 23 will be the very last season Bungie ever does. Now, this season, we are back at the Dreaming City. Back to conversing with Queen Mara. And essentially, the goal for this season is to find a way to reach the witness inside of the Traveler. And turns out, we're going to need to gather up all of Riven's remaining eggs, which is if you're a lore guy, you're probably like, what the hell? I thought all the eggs were dead or gone. And even though Riven is technically dead, she's like a ghost now. And the deal we have made with her will grant us a last wish. Now, there's a lot of new stuff this season between quests, activities, and much more. So here's our seasonal guide for Season of the Wish, going over everything you need to know about this season. Now, once you load them into the game, you'll be given a cutscene and then shoved straight into the first mission called The Final Wish. Now, if you're a regular of the Last Wish raid, you'll feel right at home here as you'll be running through familiar areas during the first quest. Now, it's very straightforward. Just follow the diamond, do what the game tells you to do. There's really no crazy mechanics that you haven't seen before. Now, after you completed this, you have to head to the helm to speak with Mara in the newly opened room to the right where you spawn in. She'll give you the Queen's Foil Sensor seasonal artifact, as well as the seasonal quest called Wishing All the Best. Now, as a fun little distraction, you can head downstairs to the floor below to find a fun Easter egg of Geralt's bathtub from the Witcher. And who knows? Maybe we might see Mara down there. Maybe in week six, week seven, perhaps middle of the season. I'd come back for that. Next, you want to head through the port on the top floor next to Mara to find Ghost Riven in there chilling, waiting for you to speak with her. Riven is acting as this season's vendor. So here is where you'll do your typical weapon and armor focusing, as well as earn rep and rank rewards. Now, speaking of reputation, you definitely want to pick up the daily bounties she has so that you can start earning ranks. And luckily, you'll be able to knock those out pretty much immediately during this next step. Now, essentially what the quest is boiling down to is that us guardians will need to search for Riven's eggs in the Riven's Lair activity found via the node there at the helm. Now, this is a match made three player activity, so don't be concerned if you do not have a team to run with, you'll be matched with other players. Now, in Riven's Lair, you'll be thrown into one of many possible pathways that exist within this version of the Dreaming City. Now, in this activity, there are multiple pathways that you can play. Now, each pathway will always have the same encounters in the same order but the pathway you get is random and there's a few of them our team has played four in total so far all encounters are separated by rooms that we're calling trap rooms so when you first start the activity and go through the portal to the left of ribbon you'll enter in the first of these trap rooms now in all of these rooms you have to find and activate three plates by standing on them this will then open the door into the first combat encounter but depending on the pathway you get these trap rooms will have different traps you have to avoid while you search for the plates now there's a pathway with spine traps and moving walls, another pathway that has encroaching darkness that you must cleanse off of you via those glowing platforms. Sometimes you have taken blight things that boop you around and knock you off the edge. And then you also have pathways that have poison clouds that actually do a tremendous amount of damage. Be careful. Now dodge these traps, whatever they are, activate the plates, then follow the diamond to the next room. Here you'll have an encounter with simple mechanics. You might have art craniums to shoot vex cubes or lower bosses shields. You may have to deal with encroaching darkness mechanics. Again, just like you did before, running those wells of light to knock the darkness off. But mechanic-wise, there's really nothing crazy here. Nothing you haven't already seen before. Now, you also have the quest updates in the top left hand of the screen that tell you exactly what to do for each encounter. Now, the only new mechanic that we've seen so far is on the pathway that has the poison traps. Here, you'll eventually come across an encounter that requires you to break plague wood or shields with the ephemeral virus. Here, you have to kill a scorn enemy called Mephitic Host, which would then drop a pick up called ephemeral virus now once picked up your entire team will get this virus buff that lasts for 30 seconds and with this buff you'll be able to take down the boss's shield as well as the shield of the abomination standing on that center pedestal you want to kill the abomination asap because the platform he's guarding is the platform you're going to need to stand on to cleanse the virus off of you and if you have the virus when the duration of it ends you will die so you'll want to get the virus kill the abomination lower the boss's shield then cleanse at the pedestal and you won't have to get the virus again if you're able to kill the boss quick enough. So blow thy load, fellas. Now, if you take too long, he will immune back up and you'll have to do the virus mechanic again. Now, other than this virus poison stuff, all the other mechanics are the same stuff we've seen in other seasons or other activities. So it should be relatively straightforward. You'll have a trap room, then an encounter, then a second trap room and a second encounter. Then you'll get a chest with some rewards. And that's the Ribbon's Lair activity. After you complete this, you'll need to speak with Petra via the holo projector at the helm. And then you're sent to the 
worst part of this quest to do blind well dude at this point i feel like we've been doing blind well now for years which we have blind well has returned with literally no changes the only good thing which was a change made a while back was that you can launch blind well via the director node in the dreaming city now petra will have given you different charges for the well completing two tier threes will complete this quest step or you can do three tier twos or four tier ones honestly tier threes are still pretty easy if you got the right build so run those so you can knock this quest step out honestly this is the most boring portion of this quest and if you're doing this part and you're wondering like cross is this really it is this the new seasonal activity it's not we have actual seasonal activities this is just connected because of the lore and the ley lines and all that other bull crap similar to like season the loss now next you have to complete the mission polysemy and retrieve riven's egg this mission is selectable via the helm directory and a very easy quest guys just follow the diamonds you'll also have vex art craniums that you'll need to pick up to destroy vex cubes and boss shields with and as you can see here in these quest steps guys Bungie's just trying to get everyone used to these mechanics now it's essentially just the riven's lair pathway but you get the egg at the end now even though it's a story mission it's really not that unique here you'll probably notice that the activities and quests are very similar if not identical now after this you're tasked to meet with Mara and Osiris at the helm they'll be in the downstairs room where the bath is but you get a bit of lore here and the tie-in that Osiris has to all of this with Mara then afterwards you talk to Riven who will give you a new quest called caught in the coil now this is essentially the end of the story quest this week but don't forget to interact with the holo projector for that radio message but now on to caught in the coil this quest step states in the coil spend a lair key by looting a lair chest earn a high score as a fire team by collecting wishing glass shards within lair pathways and purchase a dragon's gift from Riven. now i know that's a lot of steps and this activity is a lot to take in at first so let's just do a rundown of exactly what coil is it's essentially a longer tougher more in-depth version of Riven's lair but instead of a single pathway there's four of them back to back with small breaks in between to get rogue like benefits now, let me just say this in order to do a complete loop of coil you better get ready to set aside a good chunk of time like at least 30 minutes i think our first run took an hour granted there's a lot of things that can influence the amount of time required to complete a coil things like your builds what's the modifiers this week which weapons are overcharged does it synergize with your builds and then of course the roguelike benefits that you choose throughout this activity now let me go over everything you need to know first the coil has escalating difficulty players power levels are fixed starting at zero and each subsequent pathway will increase all combatants power level over the players by five now secondly wishing glass this is the activity currency that encompasses four item drops you've got clear shards red shards purple shards which you would then essentially convert at the end of each rotation into a fuse wishing glass now for those wondering what shards look like they literally look like gambit mutts except the color ones count for more points you've got clear and red shards which can drop from enemies and from breakable pots which you can actually get a ton of from just the pots pretty much you want to look everywhere you can to find these pots and make sure you shoot them and try to be close to them when you shoot them as you don't want those shards falling off the map now you also have purple shards which seem to only drop from the glass collectors which is a glowing enemy that you may stumble upon in one of the trap rooms now i've been told that the glass collector doesn't always show up which seems odd because it's such a big piece to the points necessary to get essentially platinum for this activity but as soon as you see that glowing enemy guys you want to instantly kill that guy you're gonna get like 20,000 points straight from him be on the lookout pay attention to the indicators on the left side of the screen to know if one has appeared or is escaping the game will literally tell you now these guys drop loads of shards including the purple ones that being the highest rarity ones now these shards are the only thing that increases your score which is important as the higher your score is the more fuse wishing glass you will get when you make it back to Riven. now as far as the numbers go clear shards give you 100 points red shards give you 500 points purple shards give you around 2500 points hence why those glowing collectors are so important when you actually do see them pop up and i think it's somewhere around 20 to 25 thousand score you get just from those glowing collectors now understand guys those pots that you're shooting they only appear in trap rooms so like the rooms in between like going to the portals to then go into the trap rooms there's no pots in there there's also no pots in the rooms where you're actually doing the encounters you could still get shards from those rooms but that's if an enemy actually drops them now these pots can be anywhere they can be in the corners they can be in walls they're also next to secret chests which we're going to get into in just a moment but upon completing a path 
pathway, you'll hit a break point at Riven, where essentially all of your collected shards will be combined into Fuse Wishing Glass. Now you get one Fuse Wishing Glass per 100 score you have at each Riven checkpoint. Yo, I'm just Jared, uh, one of Cross's editors. He's asleep, so I'm adding in a clarification here. The total fused wishing glass you get after each pathway is based on the score you got during that single pathway. So if during your first pathway you got a 30,000 score, at one fused glass per 100 points you're looking at 300 glass. Once you get through your second pathway, let's say your total score is now 60,000, you went up 30,000 points, so once again you'd get 300 glass. So the total fused glass you get at Riven is based on the score you earned during that single pathway. Oh, and you also start the coil with 100 glass. Forgot to mention that. Okay, makes sense. Perfect. Back to cross. You can then use this glass to purchase Dragon's Gifts from Riven. These are the roguelite buffs you can get this season, similar to cards last season, or even what we had back in Season of the Deep. Now, the examples of the gifts we've seen, though, are things like bonus revive tokens, your class ability recharging 300% faster, incoming damage from bosses decreased by 20%, stasis and void damage increased by 10% from all weapons and abilities, damage to mini bosses increased by 10%. I had one where my damage was increased by 25% while airborne, which was really really good. And then like on the higher end, the ones that really cost a lot of glass include things like your super abilities and its recharge being 200% faster or your precision weapon damage being increased by 25%. So these are no small buffs, guys. Now you can purchase as many of these gifts as you want, as long as you can afford it. If you've got the points, you can purchase a dragon's gift and that buff will stay with you for the entirety of that run. Now, unfortunately, I had a scenario in which I got booted and when I rejoined all of the previous dragon gifts that I had purchased, were no longer selected. I actually had to go back and repurchase them, but ultimately I didn't get that last buff. So needless to say, guys, don't leave this activity and come back as you will lose out on previous dragon gifts that you purchase. Now let's get into how the activity works and then of course go over secret chests. Each pathway works the same as they do in Riven's Lair with two trap rooms and two encounters. Now as you make your way through the trap rooms, when you hit a scored threshold, the game will tell you on the left side of the screen and you'll unlock doors containing secret chests so somewhere inside each of the trap rooms. Now these chests are very easy to find. You can actually pop a Wombo Detector Ghost Mod, which will highlight all chests within 50 meters. Now actually, next to these chests, you'll have a number of pots that you can shoot to give you even more shards. Now keep in mind, there's always going to be two chests. One of those chests is a trap chest. You'll literally see the circles where the spikes come out underneath it. You can't even loot it, don't even try. And normally the glowing chest is the trap chest. Bungie being sneaky out here. Now if you happen to have layer keys, when opening, these secret chests or even the chests you get from the ribbon checkpoints you'll consume a key and get bonus rewards now you can get layer keys from completing activities with ritual playlists and dreaming city activities being the best source now do keep in mind the keys are not required to get loot they just net you more loot by the way the season pass also has keys now once you complete the third pathway you'll get the option to choose from two chests at ribbon these will have holograms above them that show you what's inside and it can be very specific one chest might be gloves while the other is a fusion rifle but this is a great way to target loot things. Now, once you complete the fourth pathway, you have the same option between two chests with specific rewards, but you also get extra chests depending on your final score. If you get gold, you get two bonus chests. And just for point thresholds, I don't know how it is for everybody, but Jared got 129,000 and they were still gold. Now, platinum, at least from what we've seen, is about 140,000. 140K or higher will net you platinum. And hitting platinum is really important, guys, as this will open up a portal with a boatload of chests for you to open. And the rewards are really good here. Yes, you're spending an hour potentially doing this activity, but you're gonna get cores, enhancement prisms. I got three ascended alloys. You can also get ascended shards, seasonal weapons, dreaming city weapons, seasonal armor, wish ingrams, and a load of seasonal rep. I also got two red border weapons from these chests. Although keep in mind, I'm being told that red border drops here are still really low. So I know getting platinum is a pain. And again, we're gonna be going over builds very soon here in the next day or so on what works the best here, but the rewards really are worth it. Now, the coal activity has the multiplicity modifier, meaning the difficulty scales with fire team size. Guys, you can do this activity solo if you wish, and some people have even said it's better solo. Now, you have to select private mode when you go to launch it from the helm, but if you do it this way, no one will randomly join your fire team. By the way, for my solo players, as soon as you unlock that solo operative artifact mod, you definitely want to have that selected, as in the past, it used to give you like a 15% damage buff for everything. You're super 
super, your abilities, and your weapons. We'll be testing it this week, though, to see if it's still at 15%. Now, there are limited revives in this activity. If your entire team dies and you have no revives, you get sent back to orbit, meaning you won't get any rewards outside of what you got after completing each path. However, you can find revive tokens within pots when breaking them. You can also purchase additional revive tokens from Riven if you end up running low. My suggestion is just don't die. Makes everything substantially easier. Now, make sure to check the modifiers before you go in as you'll be able to benefit from specific overcharged weapons or even better defend against increased elemental damage. Now, togetherness is a modifier currently, which may definitely change next week, but essentially it's where base health regeneration is reduced. But when you're near another player, health regeneration is increased. So you definitely want to stay close to your teammates as the regeneration is very rough when you're separated. And in those poison trap rooms, that can sneak up on you very fast if you're split. Now, where you read the rules and modifiers for the coil, you can also see the order of the pathways in rotation. Now, we're not sure if this will rotate or change every day or week, but for now, the four pathways play out in a set order. As far as how this activity plays out though, like we said before, it's exactly like Riven's Lair, but with obviously more difficulty. And instead of getting a single pathway, you have the option to keep playing until you've done all four. Now, some other seasonal tips and things I want to go over. The seasonal armor grants you increased reputation gains up to 12% with four pieces of gear equipped. Now, this season, there's a lot of benefits for having Season of the Wish armor. It's not just the increased reputation gains, but as you can see here from some of the artifact mods, thresholds have more forgiveness when wearing these armor sets. So keep that in mind, guys. Normally in the past, I never really cared about farming for a good armor set from the season. This season, depending on how much forgiveness it adds, it definitely may be worth the time. Now, seasonal bonuses are also back. This was a feature back in Season of the Deep. You can find these bonuses in the seasonal challenges section, just one tab over. These are the seasonal upgrades that you can unlock that we've grown accustomed to over the years. Just not in the grid form that you've seen in the past, more in line with what we had during Season of the Deep. Now, these bonuses are how you unlock seasonal weapon focusing. And this is going to be your main way for getting those red border weapons. As you can obtain weekly deep sight resonance seasonal weapons from this, bonus activity rewards, and much more. Each bonus requires a task to be completed to earn said bonus. Now, everything is pretty much explained right here on the seasonal bonus page. And keep in mind, these are not time gated. It's not like the grid system in the past. You could do all of them now. Now, it doesn't matter which one of these you do first or unlock first, but I would definitely target the ones that can net you red borders faster. Now, as far as unique bonuses go, the Your Wishes, My Commands bonus unlocks more tier two and tier three dragons gifts for the coil activity, which can be very nice depending on your build. Now, the season bonus soul crafting, wish crafting, and key crafting all grant you the ability to get guaranteed deep sight weapons each week, which is fantastic for locking down those craftable weapons. Now, listen, guys, I hope we're not overwhelming you with all this information, but there's more. Not much more, but there's more. There are currently 14 secret star cats to find this season. Now, if you're wondering what the hell we're talking about, it's these little kitty cats right here. You've seen them in the past, but for those that are just trying to find the triumph so that you can track it, it's in the secret tab for Season of the Wish. Now, there's two revealed cats that you can find this week. One of them is in the Blind Well, with the other one being in the Garden of Plenty in Riven's Lair. Now, outside of the Triumph, and of course, this Ghost Shell eventually, the only thing these give you is some rep and a seasonal weapon. As far as I know, there's nothing else that you're going to get from this. I also don't know anywhere we can place these Star Cats. But if you get all 14 over the course of this season, you will unlock this exotic Ghost Shell. Outside of that, guys, there is a new Veil Containment audio for this week for my lore people. Guys, that is this season's activity. Now, considering what we just came off of in Season of the Witch, where we had the entire deck system, we had Spire and Altar with the Embarrow engine unlocking, I'm not really sure what secrets we have going into this season or even how much is going to change week to week. I think fundamentally, though, nothing is going to be too crazy here. And the only extra guides we're going to give out for this activity, unless we get something like an Embarrow engine, is just going to be a guide on how to optimize and clear the coil more efficiently, essentially just going into builds. But if there's anything we miss, feel free to let us know in the comments down below. These are the weapons you can earn this season. For those wondering, are those Vex offensive weapons? Yes, they definitely are. And they are craftable. Unlike Season of the Deep, where things like Spare Rations and Outlast and stuff weren't craftable weapons, these are adorative, optative, all of them. All of the weapons you see here, you can craft this season. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.